Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fancy Football and welcome to my video. It is time for game week 33 preview. However, we do have to look at game week 32 and see how well my team is performing for that game week. I am recording this on a Thursday, like, you know, lunchtime. So there's still two more fixtures left. And that is Sheffield United versus Tottenham and Manchester City versus Liverpool. Those two games, especially the Manchester City versus Liverpool game, is going to be very, very important for a lot of FBO managers. We need to see who's starting. We need to hear what Klopp will say after the game. Because any kind of information that we get about the players that we have that could, you know, rotate or could be rested in the future, we need to know that. That will give us the information that we need to make the correct transfers for the next few game weeks. So that is pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait until those two games are finished and then make my transfers. I probably will make it on a Saturday anyway. So I am going to hold. I'm not going to rush into things. Um, and I am looking at a few transfers that could change my team around. But anyways, let's go through Game Week 32, see how well my team has performed. Now, I did mention that I wasn't 100% sure what was going to happen in Game Week 32. It was quite difficult to predict and there were some players that I didn't have. But moving forward, like in Game Week 33 and 34 and so on, my team looked really good. Um, so all I wanted to do in this Game Week is just try to hold the position, hold the rank position that I have. Um, just outside of the top 100k again, um, but I still have five players left to play. As you can see, 36 points uh, above the average and um, over 2 million game week rank this time. Um, as you can see, 115,000k. And if we look at the team, David De Gea did really well. Seist, um, Fernandez. I, you know what? I am not going to change my captain option near the deadline again. I'm just going to keep it on the player that I think that is going to bring the points and I'm going to leave it on that person. I'm not going to make that uh, last decision and, and, and change it. I went for Raul Jimenez because, you know, he's playing against Aston Villa. Just basically, I wanted to go for someone that was highly owned, highly captained and someone that brings consistent points. And um, yeah, Jimenez didn't pay. A lot of FBM managers has captained him as well. But you know what? It's fine. Uh, we're just going to move on. Move on to Game Week 33. Martial were free. And yeah, disappointment again. Cavett Lewin, one of my differential players that did not win the points. And as you can see, I've got Sir Jury um, Song, low ownership. These, these players will definitely will help me out tonight. And I've got Kevin De Bruyne, Mane and Trent. So this fixtures here, especially this Manchester City versus Liverpool, is very important. I think a lot of FPL managers out there are waiting for this to see what happens. And that will determine our transfers. And um, I think that, you know, moving forward, I think Liverpool will still keep their strong um, players, you know, playing every single game. But... We still need to be aware. We still need to make sure that this is the case. If it's not, then we need to make some changes. And um, if if it's not, then we need to have some kind of plan, like a backup plan, just in case. That's why I banked my transfer. And um, yeah, and as you can see, if I go to the transfer menu, I got two free transfers. So this is going to give me a lot of flexibility without taking any hits. And um, this is why I bank the transfer for this scenario here, because I wasn't 100% certain on what was going to happen with the Liverpool side. Anyways, let's have a look at my team setup for Game Week 33. And as you can see, on paper, my team is actually looking really good and really strong. I've got the two Wolves players against um, Arsenal at home, uh, three Manchester United players, uh, two Liverpool against Aston Villa, um, two um, Spurs players like Uri and Song against Everton, Kevin De Bruyne and Cavett Lewin. Now Cavett Lewin is the weak link here. I tried something a little bit different. Well, I wouldn't say a little bit different. It was, um, 
you know, he's still highly owned, but I, I wanted to go for a player that was cheap enough that could get us points. Didn't work out. And uh, I am looking to move him now and get someone else in his place. Um, but the fixtures for Everton is getting better. They've got Southampton at home after the Tottenham game. Wolves is going to be difficult. But then Aston Villa, Sheffield United and Bournemouth at home. And I think like at this stage here, the last um, few fixtures are looking really good for them. So maybe removing Cameron Lewin is not actually a bad option. Um, so that's my thoughts and that's what I'm thinking to do. However, I still need to wait for this uh, Manchester City versus Liverpool game to be finished before I make any kind of uh, movement. However, I do have some transfer options. I just want to quickly look at some of the stuff that's been happening in Gaming 32. We all kind of predicted that Arsenal would do well against Norwich. Um, Bournemouth losing against um, Newcastle was actually a shock. I mean, the scoreline is... I mean, when was the last time that you saw Newcastle score four goals away? Um, Everton and Leicester, really good game. An amazing game here, West Ham against Chelsea. West Ham beating Chelsea 3-2. A lot of points uh, people has gained from Pulisic. Um, a player that a lot of you guys mentioned um, that is 4.6, only 0.1% owned. Um, Bowen has got two assists on his name and he looked good uh, against Tottenham as well. So I thought, you know what, let me keep my eye on him. And he looked good. But yeah, it has been a like couple of fixtures here that went against what we thought. Um, but yeah, and there were a few fixtures that we kind of knew that what was going to happen, like Manchester United do really well. And Greenwood um, performing amazingly uh, a price tag of 4.4 and 12.5% owned. And most uh, players that actually own him is on the bench. And if you look at, you know, the fixtures and you can look at the last three games, play 28 minutes, you know, 79, 90 minutes. And the last game he scored and assisted. Now, I'm not saying that, oh, guys, go and get him. I still think that, Rashford is the better choice if you want to go for um, an attacking position player. But these fixtures are incredible. And the time that Manchester United has to have a rest is, is decent enough as well. With all that, um, there are a couple of transfers that I am thinking. And I'm going to give you guys some scenarios and my thoughts. Okay, uh, and I know that these transfers are not on everyone else's mind. I know that people are going to go with other players. But I need to make some kind of move. I feel like I've got strong players here. I do not want to get rid of the midfielders. I think that is too much of a risk. The defence, you know, the goalkeeper, I can change and one of my strikers and the subs. So that's what I'm thinking to do, to strengthen that up and start utilising them and try and get some points out of them. So yeah, let's go through the transfers. Two free transfers and 0 0.1 in the bank. Now, like I said, I've got a couple of transfer uh, options for different situations and different scenarios. Number one is I don't really want to get rid of my midfielders. I feel like if I get rid, they do well, then I'm going to lose a lot of rank. That's the problem. And the defence I can change about, uh, Cabot Lewin, you know, and my subs, I can do that. And I think with the transfers that I'm thinking about, could make this team a little bit more stronger just for Game Week 33. So the transfer that I'm thinking about is to remove Connolly here. Although he's been playing, he's been helping me out in the subs just in case that I need him. Bring in Greenwood. 4.4. Now, I know that he played really well for at least one game. But most of the times that he plays, he actually performs really well. And I think that he will play against Bournemouth. And Bournemouth is not playing well at all. And I just want to go for it. And because him being this cheap, I can bench him later on. And you know what? I don't really want to go for three Manchester United plays anyway. Like in the in the long run, I do want to go for different differentials. 
um, I can't fit in Rashford and if, if I wanted to bring Rashford I need to make a lot of changes and I don't really want to make too much changes. The, I've got a strong midfield here and bringing Greenwood here would make me keep this midfield. If I go for Rashford, then I, I gotta make some surgeries. I gotta, you know, make some sacrifices, and it's not what I want to do. I can do this and bring in a Chelsea midfielder like Pulisic or something, but I think Man, you know, we we're just we're just waiting for the information, right? If Man, if we find that that Mane and Salah is going to be rotated, then of course, then I'll remove him. But the Liverpool's got a fantastic fixture at home against um, Aston Villa, so let's just add. So that that's my kind of the scenario there. Let's just add Greenwood, and I can always bench him later on and play another player. So it's not a big deal. And as you can see, I've got too many Manchester United players. Remove David De Gea, and I can go for any kind of goalkeeper that I want that is not above uh, 5.2. I can go for Pope, a player that a lot of managers has. I can go for Henderson. I can go for a lot of um, goalkeepers here. So you let me know in the comments below which goalkeeper should I go for. But I want to do something a little bit different, a little bit risky and a little bit out there um, just for the fun of it as well. I want to really enjoy the last remaining fixtures and I want to go for Fabianski. I know that West Ham hasn't been keeping clean sheet and I'm not going to say please get him but you know with save points and you know the ownership of 2% it's good enough for him to maybe get something. It's just something and the fixtures are turning for them and you know it could be the run of games where they could keep a clean sheet so you let me know in the comments below what you think um if you want me to go for another goalkeeper the options are open so something like this so the goalkeeper is just not 100 percent certain on what it, what the goalkeeper is but i do want to get a, a low ownership goalkeeper so yeah if i don't go for the first transfer options that i showed you and then we find out that Mane or Salah, you know, they're going to have a lot of rest. And, uh, you know, Klopp said that, yeah, I'm just going to give a lot of kids a chance to play in the Premier League. Then Mane is going to go. And if that's the case, Kevin Lewin is going to go as well. And I'm going to go all out. Well, I say all out. I could get at least one Manchester City, like another Manchester City, like Jesus or Mares. I think if I go for Jesus, um, his ownership is lower than Mares, I think. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, 3.9% owned. I know his 9 million is quite expensive. Um, and there is always a rotation risk with him. And as you can see, I've got 9.5. So I could, I could bring in a Chelsea uh, midfielder like Pulisic or something. That is 7 million or any other of um, Chelsea's uh, midfielders. Something like this. And if you look at the ownership, 6.6, .6, this will give me a good chance to, to, um, to rank up. Watford at home, Crystal Palace away, Sheffield United away, and Norwich at home. Good fixtures for Chelsea um, to get some um, returns and get some points for us. So this is what my other scenario is. If I find out or if I think that Mane might not play. Or I could just go for it. I can just like just go for it, guys, and bring in uh, Mares. There we go. And go for the Manchester City players. Because these fixtures are incredible. And they're not going to just sit there and get beaten. They still want to win. You know, let's just say they, they lose against Liverpool in the next game. They will definitely would want to win against Southampton. Uh, Newcastle just to nail on that second position place that's the kind of the scenario that's the kind of the thing that I'm going for uh, I want to take a little bit of a risk and play a little bit different in a way where it doesn't hurt my overall team and it doesn't hurt my rank that much I think making these adjustments and having strong kind of players as well that can cover a lot of uh, good fixtures could be the way to go anyways that is about it hope you guys enjoyed it 
uh, hopefully that you guys will have a fantastic, fantastic weekend. Um, my captaincy is going to be on Fernandez. Hopefully I can get some points. Um, yeah, captain options did not work, but still in near that 100, top 100k. Um, I think tonight will be the night to push me back in there. But that's about it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, subscribe if you're new and always, always drop a like. Thank you. See you guys next time. Bye.